Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name's Saga and if you're new to this channel, welcome. And basically I'm a software engineer in London and in this video I'm going to try, I'm going to explain why I decided to quit my graduate software engineering job at Accenture only 11 months in. So let me give you some context as to what my career at Accenture has been like. Well, I joined the company in September 2021, pretty much after I finished my degree in aerospace engineering, and I joined as a software engineer. And during this time, I firstly went through a period of training to basically learn about full stack engineering. So learning things like React, JavaScript, AWS, and in essence, how to create a full-fledged web app using AWS and basically the, the MERN stack, more or less. And then after my training, I had a period where I was on bench, so I didn't actually have any work to do, in which time I, was, I got myself certified in AWS. And then after that, I landed a project at Accenture where I have been to this day which is basically using React, GraphQL, and in essence, it's a web app that we're making. But yes, you did hear correctly, I am leaving Accenture in probably about, what is it? One and a half weeks since this video will be uploaded. So yeah, if you're watching this video, then you're probably either going to be watching it when I'm in my last week at Accenture or way into the future, so who knows? But as with everything, there's a good and a bad side to something. So I'm going to firstly go over what I really liked about Accenture and, you know, why I would recommend it as a place to work for some people. And well, the first thing I want to say is the people that I worked with were really awesome people, like super friendly, super willing to help. And actually, I would say that I, I made a lot of friends in Accenture. Oh, friend! Oh, new friend! Friend! Oh, friend! He's my friend! Oh, oh friend! Oh, friend! Since, well, moving to London uh, was a reasonably big step for me. And I didn't know many people in London. So I think it was a really cool place to be in a sense where I got to make a lot of friends at the company and hopefully stay in touch with many of them even after I have left. Another great thing about Accenture is that like they invested a fair amount into training, especially in the early days of my career at the company. And that's like basically what I'm talking about there is the full stack engineering bootcamp that they put me through, right? pretty much like two weeks in after starting the company, after starting at the company. So that is something that I definitely feel as though helped me a lot in my career. And to be honest, I may not be leaving the company if it wasn't for that bootcamp. Okay, well, now you're probably thinking, Saga, why are you leaving Accenture so early? Well, I need to admit, my OnlyFans account has taken off amazingly. No, just kidding. I don't have an OnlyFans account. Of course I don't. Uh, well, let me go into the actual reasons why I want to leave Accenture and well, not want to, but why I am leaving Accenture. So the first reason that helped me make my decision of why I want to leave Accenture is the fact that many of the projects that you have the opportunity to work at Accenture are quite dull, in my opinion especially since the majority of them are just sort of like, I want to say cookie cutter style projects where they basically go to a company saying like, look, this is what we can do with your company. Here's where we've done it before and it will improve your efficiency and blah, blah, blah. And I think it's great. I mean, sometimes they can be somewhat interesting, but they don't feel innovative enough for me to really enjoy working on them because I like to, in essence, build new things from scratch, sort of. And at Accenture, you don't really have that opportunity too often. The other reason why I decided to leave Accenture is that you have no real ownership over the work you do. And by this, I mean, so in a product company, you're going to have more of a say in the direction that the product goes, the sort of like how it's going to look, what features it's going to have, any new features that you can add and so on. But in, in Accenture, it's very, it's very different because the project I was on as a developer and an engineer, you don't actually have a say in what the product is going to come, become like, or you, you don't get a say in like, if, for example, in my case, the web app is going to develop because everything's pre-signed off with the client. So in essence, all you're doing is 
you're just implementing the stuff that the client wants. It's not like you're creating new features and I guess putting your input into how the site can be better because everything in that sense is thought of before you even touch the requirements and so on. So I would say that your role is not, I wouldn't call yourself an engineer in that environment. I would just say you're a developer because a developer and an engineer, in my opinion, are two different types of people. So a developer is someone who purely just writes code and doesn't have to be creative, doesn't have to be imaginative, doesn't have to solve problems, if you will. But an engineer is basically all of what a developer is not. So they do solve problems. They do like come up with innovative solutions and so on. And I feel as though you're not an engineer at Accenture. You are just a developer. And I kind of missed the problem solving side of things that you do get if you do work as a real engineer. Okay, this is another big one. Accenture, if you don't already know, is basically a service company, which means that clients come to Accenture saying, hey, look, this is what we want doing. Can you do it for us? And Accenture bills their clients at a, a rate basically saying, okay, this is what you need doing. This is how much it's gonna cost. So pay us this much. And the problem with that is that the business model is very unscalable unless if you just have more and more people working on the project because the way Accenture works is that you would bill your client X millions of pounds, for example, depending on how many people are going to be working on that project. So in essence, you're charging out individuals to the client. Whereas in a product company, you're making the money-making machine. So the way a product company makes money is by people using their products and services. Well, yeah, services in a sense where like it could be a software as a service, so like SaaS. But that's the thing. So in my opinion, and from what I understand from my experiences and so on, the real money makers in a service company are the salespeople and the consultants because they, in essence, land the contracts and the deals to perform such work. So. Without the salespeople, the engineers will have no job in a service company. Whereas in the product company, the money makers are the engineers because without the engineers, you don't have the money making machine. And that's why I feel as though you yourself as an engineer are going to be more valued in a product company than you are in a service company. And uh, when it comes to being more valued, I mean in the dinero, peso and the, the cashola way. And well, speaking about money, uh, to be honest, I think Accenture's salaries are quite low in the um, grand scheme of things. And I don't know why that is. I have a feeling though for engineers specifically, it is because of the business model. So a service company is bound to charge engineers less than a product company, purely because the scalability of a service-based company is not as easy as a product company. So in a product company, you need less people to make a lot of money. Whereas in a service-based company, it's like the revenue grows proportionally to the number of people you have at your company. And so that's why I feel as though you can have, you can hire less people and still earn a lot in a product-based company, hence why the earning and the salaries of each engineer can be way higher than that of an engineer at a service-based company. And to be fair, that is actually very true because my salary at Accenture is pretty low. And honestly, like comparing myself to other software engineers in London, my salary is not great, but my salary at my new role, which I, I will tell you about, not in this video, but I will tell you about it soon, is much better and it is a figure where I feel as though I can comfortably live in London and well not have to stress about money all the time whereas at Accenture that is kind of the case unfortunately. So I said that my employer-to-be is going to pay me more than Accenture and maybe you're thinking okay Saga that's great but you are in your early days of your career so why, why would you leave Accenture it's such a big brand name you know you're gonna learn a lot but Yes, I agree. I, mean, I would learn a lot at Accenture, but I would also learn a lot at the new company I'm going to. And let's just talk specifically about money, because what I've understood is that the earlier you invest in, say, the stock market or like a global equity fund or something like that, right, um, the more you're going to earn in the long term. Because if you invest a lot when you're younger, that 
a lot amount will become way much more a lot in the future because of you know compound interest and exponential growth in uh, your money so in my opinion it's very very beneficial if you earn a lot when you're younger because you're able to invest a lot because you don't have as much expenses like me i i don't have like a family or anything so i don't have to and put money into that and so on and i can afford to to live a relatively you know cost effective life and so i have i have a good opportunity where i can have a really good salary and i can have a really minimal amount of expenses and with that difference i can invest a lot more money when i'm working at my new career than i would now at accenture so my investments and more, my my financial portfolio will grow much more like rapidly and you know it will result in a basically a sizable portfolio uh, in years to come which is a great benefit especially with the cost of living in london and you know how much it costs to even buy like somewhere to live in london and the uk in general to be honest so yeah i think um it is well worth moving if, uh, if you are being offered a lot of money in a alternative company but you're doing the same work so why would you not do that okay um, i do want to stress that money is not the only motivation for me to move to this other company in fact this other company is like incredible and i will probably make another video about who they are and what they do but in essence the team there like literally i don't even know how to explain just just yeah awesome this is what i'm gonna say for now but yeah so there we go. That is my explanation and I guess slight ramble about why I'm leaving Accenture. And I do want to leave some lasting words by saying that the people at Accenture that I worked with are amazing. And well, if you are watching this video, if you are my fellow colleagues and work friends, well, hello, thanks for visiting my channel. But yeah, you guys are pretty cool. And hopefully I get to stay in touch with you guys in the future. And who knows, maybe maybe we'll work together again. So always open to keeping friends with awesome people. So thanks a lot for making my time at Accenture awesome. And yeah, if anyone else who's watching this video has any questions, drop a comment. Also feel free to like the video and subscribe to figure out where I'm gonna go next. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in another video. Goodbye.